Hi there and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. Meteorological autumn begins on Friday. And whilst meteorological summer may have felt a bit more like autumn at times, autumn may feel like summer certainly at first as high pressure builds in but for the final day of August. We've got rain moving across parts of Wales in the southwest, pushing into southeastern parts by the afternoon as well as Northern Ireland. Scotland mostly fine away from the far west as well as the north and the east of England with some sunny spells and light winds. But towards the southwest, heavy showers start developing as the day comes to a close. Temperatures are a little below average across the board. And then as we head into the evening, well, the front that's bringing the rain clears for a time across the southeast, but a ripple develops in it, courtesy of the jet stream injecting some upper forcing, and that slows down the front, injects some uncertainty into the forecast, but also leads to the potential for some heavy showers or longer spells of rain into the southeast of England, certainly at first. There's likely to be some lively showers across central and southern parts of England, perhaps Wales on Friday, uh, even a thunderstorm or two. But further north, it's more settled. Northern England, Northern Ireland seeing a lot of cloud, one or two showers. But Scotland seeing the lion's share of dry and bright weather, some sunny spells, especially towards the northwest. It's another cool day in the north. I think a bit more humidity in the south because of that wriggling weather front and temperatures here a touch higher compared with Thursday. But that front's out of the way by the time we get to the weekend and our eyes then turn to developments in the Atlantic. I'm going to mention these hurricanes in just a moment, but for the weekend, the main driver of our weather is this low. It's not actually going to come in and affect the UK directly, but it will indirectly affect the UK because around that low, we've got this warmth being drawn north. And you can see this temperature contrast, cold air coming in across Canada and Greenland and all this warmth pushing north across the Atlantic. And what that helps to do is shunt the jet stream to the north, this ridge developing in the jet stream, which then topples over the UK in time for the weekend, allowing high pressure to build both in the upper air and at the surface. Meanwhile, the low and the trough of the jet stream that were over the UK on Friday, well, they push into Spain and expect some heavy rain to occur across parts of Spain, Portugal, south of France during the weekend. That may rear its head back across the UK at times next week. It may do. I'll have more on that aspect of the forecast in just a moment. But for the start of the weekend, this ridge of high pressure, ridge of the jet stream, leading to fine and settled conditions for the vast majority. That's not to say there won't be any showers around on Saturday. It's still relatively humid across southern areas in particular and through central parts. Could be the odd shower, the odd heavy downpour here. But for the vast majority, actually, it's largely dry. Some sunny spells coming through. Feeling warm in the sunshine, 23, 24 Celsius in the south, 18 to 20 further north. You'll see there are areas of cloud about, so it's not completely blue skies. And there is some rain edging by the end of the afternoon into Lewis and Harris. Now, that rain pushes into the north of Scotland through Saturday night and into the start of Sunday. And by Sunday afternoon, it's just about fringing upon the central belt of Scotland, the far north of Northern Ireland. A lot of cloud for Scotland and Northern Ireland, as well as that wet weather moving in and the breeze picking up. But for England and Wales, it's a largely fine Sunday. Showers fewer and less heavy compared with Saturday. For the vast majority, it's a dry day with some sunny spells and it's gonna feel a bit warmer with temperatures reaching 24, 25 Celsius in the south, cooler under the rain further north. The weather front in the north does tend to sink south during Monday as a weakening feature it runs into high pressure and really becomes just an area of showers by the time it pushes into central parts. We keep the fine weather in the south. I think a cool morning on Monday with some fog patches, but otherwise a fine day follows. The showery zone across central areas and then blustery showers pushing in to northwestern parts of the UK, Scotland and Northern Ireland, some heavy downpours, especially for Western and Northern Scotland. And here's the jet stream on Monday. Really, you can see this divide across the UK, uh, the dividing line being the weather front, settled in the south, more changeable further north. And the big question marks into next week are the degree to which the settled weather and the high pressure in the south affects much of the UK and the degree to which this Atlantic mobility, this changeable weather affects the UK. And that question mark, well, that hinges on the behaviour of these hurricanes I mentioned, Franklin and Idalia. Now, let's take a look 
at these hurricanes because at the time of recording, Idalia, a Category 3, briefly a Category 4 earlier, but Category 3 hurricane is making landfall across the Big Bend area of Florida, bringing with it uh, torrential rainfall, winds in excess of 120, 125 miles an hour, a catastrophic storm surge of 12 to 16 feet as well. And the flooding from the rainfall and the storm surge fairly extensive across the Gulf Coast of Florida before that heavy rain pushes into Georgia and South Carolina as it pushes through during the rest of Wednesday and into Thursday. So truly dangerous conditions courtesy of that Category 3 Hurricane Idalia. And then quite quickly pushes away and weakens, but nevertheless, it is uh, quite an extraordinary hurricane. Meanwhile, Hurricane Franklin is uh, on, in another part of the Atlantic, and that's pushing north over the next few days. This is the Met Office model showing how that's going to push north, bringing some tricky conditions to Bermuda, as well as the coast of the USA, some life-threatening surf, for example. But eventually, by the start of next week, the main Met Office computer run has Franklin pushing into the North Atlantic. And that has consequences for our own weather because, as you can see, it's going to push some energy and some warmth towards the jet stream, which in turn buckles the jet stream in the Met Office model here and allows high pressure close to the UK to become reinforced, allowing that high pressure to build across the UK. But we don't just look at one computer model run. If we rewind back to the uh, time of recording and take a look at many, many different computer model runs, I'm going to put on the tracks of 50-odd computer model runs from the European model. And this is a heat map, so the uh, warmer the color, the more of these runs are together. And as you can see, they all share a common theme heading out into the North Atlantic over the next few days, but some of them take a slightly different path. Some of these outliers go further west or further east, but the majority actually take this central path, just like the Met Office model, allowing that jet stream to be buckled and allowing high pressure to build over the UK. Nevertheless, you must never discount the outliers, and these outliers have quite different scenarios for the UK. So let's take a look at the most likely scenario through next week. The jet stream becomes amplified, it becomes buckled, it whips into a slightly more wriggly shape across the Atlantic and allows high pressure to become reinforced across the UK after that more changeable start to the week in the north. And that high pressure through next week would bring mostly fine conditions and reasonable warmth with some spells of sunshine. We've also got low pressure over Iberia staying there, low pressure towards the northwest of the UK staying there. But if uh, Hurricane Franklin takes a slightly different path, then the jet stream become, could become even more amplified, even more wriggly. And if that happened, if that jet stream was really wriggly, then it would allow these uh, very showery conditions across the southern part of Europe to push north across the UK. So showers and thunderstorms and humid air pushing in from the south. That's a, a second less likely scenario. And a third scenario is if uh, Franklin took a slightly different track, perhaps went more to the west and largely avoided the jet stream, well, the whole pattern would become flatter and that would allow the jet stream to take low pressure in to the UK from the northwest, bringing more changeable weather. So to summarise, high pressure is reasonably likely through next week, but there are some uncertainties to do with the track of Hurricane Franklin, how it interacts with the jet stream, and how wriggly it makes the jet stream. And that will determine how much we see showers and thunderstorms drift up from the south at times, or even low pressure arrive from the northwest. What about beyond next week, days 7 to 14? Well, we're not just looking at the tropical Atlantic, we're looking further afield to the Pacific, where it looks likely through the first week or two of September, a pulse of tropical rainfall and thunderstorms will move across the Indonesia and into the Pacific. This is something that is a regular oscillation in our atmosphere called the Madden Julian oscillation. And there's an explainer video on this on the Met Office Learn About Weather YouTube channel. But there's a decent relationship between the phase of the Madden Julian oscillation in the next week or so and a ridge of high pressure dominating across the UK 
at this time of year. And if you were just to take into account that relationship, you'd expect high pressure to generally be in control for the first week or two of September. But those aren't the only things that could affect the UK weather. As I explained, there is the tropical Atlantic, which is particularly active at the moment. It's not just Hurricane Franklin. It's also the remnants from Hurricane Idalia, which could throw a spanner in the works later next week and beyond. And other tropical systems that develop over the coming week or two could also play a role in influencing how the UK's weather evolves at much shorter timescales than what we're dealing with here. So we'll keep you updated right here at the Met Office, but uh, that's all from me. Bye-bye.